Welcome to the Why God Why podcast. I am Peter Engler here with our series co-host, Alyssa Catanzaro. Um, we are here doing our series, Why Would I Volunteer? And today we are tackling a very heavy, um, but a very needed topic. It's why would I volunteer for a nonprofit combating uh, sex trafficking? So we are here with Sarah Mully and uh, Mala Malstead um, from Freedom Firm. Uh, Alyssa, what can you tell us about uh, Mala and Sarah You just in your organization? Because you know them very well. Yeah. So I, within my role at Browncraft, I've learned more about Freedom Firm and Mala over the um, Global Outreach Experience Missions Week. And I got the privilege to hear Mala speak last year to the youth group, actually, which I thought, was it last year? It might've been 2019. I don't know. Everything blurs together. Um, but she got to speak to the youth group and it was really powerful because like, obviously sex trafficking is horrible and awful, but to speak to a group that like the ages were very similar, I think that was really shocking. And as a, I mean, I'm in my twenties, but to hear it happening to young girls really, but like, I don't know, it was just really overwhelming to listen to her speak, share stories about kids that I'm literally like sitting with in the youth group. So yeah, that was really impactful for me. Um, and their work is just truly incredible trying to rescue girls, uh, in India and yeah, I'm very excited for this podcast. Yeah, I, I'd also add, you know, for those of you that, you know, I think, <clears throat> I mean, I hope that all of our listeners were against se sex trafficking. You're listening to this. You know, I do know several people that are passionate, but I'd encourage mm -hmm. this is an issue that all of us need to be aware of. And I think Mala and Sarah are going to bring um, just a perspective that we need. Um, yeah. And I think even the work that they're doing in India informs us here uh, in America. So Sarah and Mala, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. We got, we got both of you Skyped in from our wonderful, illustrious producer, Dave. So we're glad to have you. Um, why don't we start with Mala and then we'll go to Sarah. Why don't you both tell us how you both got involved um, in Freedom Firm and just kind of you know, your hope and passion around uh, serving those and combating sex trafficking? Yeah. I first heard about uh, children who were being bought and sold in India uh, when I was 18 years old. I was a senior in high school in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, I had grown up in missions and had, had been born in India, but we were in the States and a really good friend of my parents came and just spent a couple days with us. And he was from India. And during his time with us, he sat me down on the couch and he, he said, Mala, I have something to share with you. And he proceeded to, to tell me about children in Calcutta, little girls who were being sold into prostitution. And that was 1988. And, um, At the end of the at the end of the talk, he just said to me, "You know, Mala, you were born in India. You have an Indian name, and um, I think that you're supposed to do something about this issue." And I mean, when I look back at it, it's it's incredibly audacious that somebody would even say that to somebody else. Like, I know what God wants you to do with your life. Um, but that conversation completely changed my life. And he left and I had this enormous emotional reaction. I just started crying and crying. And for two days, I couldn't eat. I couldn't um, sleep. I just paced the house crying. I don't know what my parents thought. Um, but I had just this huge reaction. And at the end of those two days, I purposed in my heart that that if the Lord wanted me to go to India and rescue girls, that I I was willing. Um, and I told that gentleman, my my dad's friend, I said, you know, I'm going to go to college. I I have four years to go to college. I need to study 
Um, and at the end of those four years, he um, actually his daughter called called me and said, "Hey, Mala, we have an opening in Calcutta. Why don't you come and uh, teach English?" Because I was an English teacher. Why don't you come teach English? So I went to Calcutta, and as soon as I arrived, they had just rescued uh, the school that he worked with had just rescued a twelve year old from from being trafficked. She was in the process. Her uncle was trafficking her and selling her, and she was rescued. And um, that little girl was too crazy to put in kindergarten. She was already 12. Uh, she was completely chaotic in her in her um, behavior. They couldn't put her with other children. So they said, Mala, why don't, you, why don't you spend some time with her and see if you can settle her down and start teaching her one-on-one? And so I spent the next uh, four months one-on-one with this, with this girl. And, um, and that was just an incredible experience uh, to work with her. After that, um, I, I met Greg. And actually, Greg came to Calcutta and proposed. That's another story, which I won't go into. Um, and I thought at that point, I thought, maybe I heard God wrong. I thought. You know, I know I'm supposed to marry Greg, but I never imagined that my husband would want to go to India and rescue girls. I mean, it's just so, um, yeah. Uh, and and so I got married and we, we were in Uzbekistan. Greg was with the Peace Corps. And uh, after the first couple months of marriage, he looked at me and said, hey, Mala, what are we going to do with our lives? And... Um, I said, well, I've always wanted to go to India and rescue girls who were forced into prostitution. So this is 1992 now. And so very long story short, um, he said, well, I'll do that. And I want to do that. Let me go to law school. And uh, so he came back to the States. Um, Greg went to law school. At the end of law school, he got hired by the International Justice Mission and we were the first, uh, he was the first director for IJM in um, Mumbai in 2000. And so uh, we started rescuing girls in 2000. In 2005, we decided to leave IJM and start Freedom Firm. So Greg and I um, founded Freedom Firm in 2006. So yeah, my story is really started as such a specific calling from the Lord when I was 18. And then I think Greg was a huge part of that calling and had his own distinct calling from the Lord for this exact issue. And then he, he just, God was always one step ahead of us, guiding us and taking us and positioning us exactly where he wanted us to be. So long answer. Love it. Sarah, I'd love to hear how um, just kind of you you got started and involved. Yeah. Well, it was really neat to hear from you, Alyssa, about the experience being with the youth group, because that's actually part of my story. I was in middle school when I first learned about the issue of trafficking, and my youth pastor at the time was actually leaving the United States to go work for an anti-trafficking organization. And so he shared about that and why he was leaving the church. And I just remember being blown away. Like, I cannot believe this is happening in our in my lifetime that there are so many people still in bondage and in slavery. And so learning about that, it really made an impression on me and wanted to be involved in some capacity. So yeah, I went to college for music and was just wondering how can I be a part of this fight for justice alongside my studies and joined a student chapter there to raise awareness and raise funds for anti-trafficking. And I remember graduating and getting my first job in college ministry. And something I was really excited about was like, oh, I have a steady income now I can give monthly to an anti-trafficking organization. So ever since I heard about it from, yeah, in middle school, I've been looking for ways to be involved and joined the Freedom Firm team this past year. And it's so yeah, wonderful to be a part of this team and be a part of the work. So that's a little bit of my story. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, so now we've we've learned how you 
joined Freedom Firm, but what do you guys do for Freedom Firm? And what does Freedom Firm do? I mean, you you talked about it a little bit, but if you want to just go a little bit more in depth of what they actually do or what the... Yeah. 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 Freedom Firm is an anti-trafficking organization and we uh, rescue girls who are under the age of 18 out of brothels and forced prostitution in India. Um, we do this through um, investors that go into them. Um, they pose as customers. Uh, they don't sleep with the girls. I always have to say that. Um, but they do, they do pull out the minor girls from a lineup and uh, pay the money to the brothel keeper. Then we try and do a raid and rescue that girl or number of girls in that brothel. And then from there, we file a criminal complaint in the police station. And we have um, lawyers that step in at that point that try to protect the girl, that also try to get the perpetrators you know, behind bars. And we slowly try and build a case um, to, you know, to convict, well, to convict that perpetrator. So um, we believe that the way to stop anti, you know, to stop trafficking is to um, punish the perpetrators so that they will not keep trafficking in more minors. If you just rescue a girl, uh, you know, another one is going to be in her place, put back in her place. And it's really just, you might even be feeding the system if all you're doing is rescuing. You change the life of the one girl but you don't change the system. And what we're really after is the end of sex trafficking, child sex trafficking in India. And so that's why our whole um, strategy is about not only rescuing that girl, but also um, winning cases in court um, or winning as many points along the uh, justice trail, if you will, to uh, create a deterrent that stops other people from trafficking girls. Um, and finally, our last piece is restoration. And we work with girls as long as, I mean, some of the girls we've been with now, we rescued back in 2000, 2006. Um, and we're still talking to them today because restoration is a lifelong thing for these girls. Their trauma has been so deep and so pervasive. Um, our whole goal is to get them, uh, back into their communities, um, functioning with a job. Um, many of these girls want to get married. Um, and that's really the best protection for them ultimately is to be married and back in a normal community. And so our, we have a whole bunch of social workers who work with these girls long after rescue. So that's really it in a nutshell, rescue, restoration, and justice. That was a great question, Alyssa. And Mala, thanks for kind of filling that in. I I, I guess I'm kind of curious, um, you know, we're Skyping you in in America. Um, so I guess what does a day in a life, you know, that's kind of on the India side, what does a day in a life in America look for both you know, you, Mala, and Sarah, of what you do on a regular basis. Um, we're still recording this in a pandemic, so there's a lot more than we think. But I guess I'd kind of be curious, what is your Monday through Friday, probably Monday through Sunday all, all the time? What does that look like for both of you? Mm. Sarah, why don't you answer? I view a lot of my role with Freedom Firm is connecting more people to the work that Freedom Firm is doing. And so that's a huge part of what we do in the U.S. is raising support and awareness about this topic and connecting people to our work so that the team in India can be supported um, both financially and otherwise. It's a lot of communication, making sure that people are aware of what, what is going on, both for donors and partners who are already connected, but also exploring, like, how can we introduce new people who have never heard of or might not even be aware of uh, the issue of sex trafficking? How can we get them engaged as well? And what about you, Mala? Yeah. 
I feel like my main role as as the co-founder of Freedom Firm is to um, tell the stories of the girls. Um, and so I do a lot of writing. I, I write blogs and, you know, different emails that we send out monthly. Every time a girl is rescued, um, we tell her story, how that rescue happened and what she's facing. Um, and so I just feel like, um, yeah, my my biggest role is really an editorial role, role and a writing role as I as I. And the kind of the gatekeeper for the message of of what Freedom Firm is doing, and um, how we want to share that, those stories with the world. Um, and we we do. We have hundreds of blogs. We have over three hundred blogs, I think, now um, from two thousand and six. So if you want to read stories about hundreds of girls, um, because every story is so individual, uh, you can go on our website and and read them there. So. You know, uh, I'm going to kind of throw to a list because one of the reasons we did this series was, you know, we, we wanted to take organizations, but I think if I'm a listener, you know, sex trafficking just seems so overwhelming. Like it's just such this big issue. And even we talked like pre, uh, you know, there's some people that, you know, they're going to be like Sarah and Mala that give their lives for this, but there's also, you know, for most of us, it's, you know, reading blah. And I don't know that continue. And, you know, I guess I'd be curious to hear from like the three of you, you know, what's that continuum of, I would never want someone to miss out on what, uh, both of you experience, especially if that's your life calling. But I also realize, man, there's a ton of things that we can be doing and a part of. So, I don't know, Alyssa, maybe you have a better way to frame that question, or I don't know what your thoughts are as you kind of talk with, you know, with Mala and Sarah. I'm just kind of curious, throwing it to all three of you. Yeah, so um, I think, yeah, it's sex trafficking is huge. Like, it's a big, even the concept of it is very confusing, like, <laughs> to someone who just would never have to cross that ever. Um but I do think like I see Mala and her heart and Sarah and all the work that they do. Like we've done um, some partnered events like with Freedom Firm in the past. And so to like for me, I'm the stories and the videos and the blogs like those are incredible. They're so worth reading and watching like that is if you can get through one of those and not care about this issue like. I don't, I don't know what's going on inside, but, um, yeah, so that's just like, that's something that's very moving just because we are people and we're supposed to care about one another. Um, for me and for Browncroft, like we support this effort financially. And I think that's, um, kind of what we can do. Like even sitting here talking to you guys, like you guys are both in the United States, all of this is happening across the world. And like, I mean, even in a pandemic, like we're not going to India anytime soon, at least me personally. Um, but yeah, but I can support the efforts financially so that the work can still be done. Um, yeah. Just on cue, the, the motor started. So, um, <laughs> I, I don't know, Mala and Sarah, how, I mean, when you're talking with people from America, you know, how do you help people process through, hey, I'm going to invest in this, you know, from America versus, hey, this might be, there might be a future Mala and Sarah sitting there that are going to give their life. I guess I'm just kind of curious to hear both of you. Well, I think that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. And I feel like my job is just to tell a story. And mm -hmm. I always ask the Lord to um, bring it alive to the people that, that he, he wants them to do something about it. And I, I think there's honestly, there's so many issues out there in the world that break God's heart. Mm -hmm. And, and this world is full of hurting people and, um, suffering is, is the one thing that ties us all together. I mean, so many of the women, so many of the people that I share with when I get to speak in the States, 
you know, one out of four at least have been sexually abused. And, you know, it's sexual abuse is a, you know, it's a global, global thing, whether there's, uh, you know, trafficking, of course, has to do with money and being sold for sex. But it's amazing how many people relate to this issue personally in mm. some way or another. And so a lot of times when I speak to people, there is just this heart connection really quick because they've, they can imagine it. They can imagine it. If you've been abused in any way, you can imagine this, mm. you know? And yeah, it is awful to talk about. Um, but I feel that the Holy Spirit really comes and quickens hearts and and calls us i do i think yeah there's so many good causes to give to but i really trust the lord to touch the people that he wants to give to freedom firm or that he wants to get them involved into freedom firm and so yeah i, th I think we're really supposed to have just a very open stance to towards the lord like what do you want me to do with this what i just heard is there anything you want me to do with it? Yeah. Sarah, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts too. Yeah, I think it's, I was reflecting on this question ahead of time and thinking about in First Corinthians, how Paul just writes about like in a body of believers, we all have different contributions. So even thinking, you know, for the people who God does put it on their heart to be involved in freedom for or anti-trafficking, even there's different contributions within that. People can engage in offer their time or skills or resources, and that can look different for yeah, many people. I think even in my own story, there's just been seasons where it hasn't been a part of my day to day, but uh, living in New York City and doing a walk to raise awareness, we had these signs with statistics about trafficking. And I just remember that being a really powerful way. And that was just, you know, three hours on a Saturday, but helping to raise awareness in that way. And there's a couple students that I'm friends here with at Penn State University, and they're organizing their friend group to do a half marathon run to wear freedom firm shirts while they run and raise some funds in the process. So, um, yeah, I don't think that partnering with freedom firm has to look like one way. Um, people can get involved in so many different ways using their unique strengths and resources that God has given them, um, to be a part of this work. If you were born to a shoemaker cast, you, your father was a shoe, shoemaker, your grandfather was, and all the way down through the generations. And now you also will be a shoemaker. And so, um, they have, they have casts for everything. And there was a cast for temple dancing and that was Devadasi. And at, at first you were just, you know, hundreds of years ago, that would have been you know, you were dancing for the gods in a temple, um, doing all kinds of rituals. And then it became, well, if the priests sleep with you, then, you know, then you have, um, you know, there's a religious connection to that sexuality. And so, yeah, this doesn't happen with boys. This is, this is little girls. So, I think, I mean, this is really heavy and this kind of shares the important work that you're doing. And I guess kind of where, where I'm at, um, you know, and I'm kind of listening to the three of you cause you know, again, Mala, I think this is probably like the second time we've emailed, but and Sarah, this is the first time, mm -hmm. but you know, Alyssa, I, I think people now are probably at the place listening. What can I do? And the neat thing about, what you do is anybody, if they're in Portland or Los Angeles, they can be a part of it. So Alyssa, I'd like for you to kind of start, you know, how you have been a part of this, but then I'd love to hear from both, you know, Sarah and Mala, you know, just some very practical ways to not only learn, you know, we're going to share about your blog. Um, we're going to share that on social media, but like ways that you can be part of anti-trafficking. So I don't know, Alyssa, why don't you... 
Yeah. Um, I really love what Sarah said before about like the 5k and the half marathon. I don't run, but, um, but I just think that's awesome that there are opportunities to do kind of whatever you want in order to spread awareness and raise funds. Um, yeah. So for me, I definitely am I've probably talked about this before. I'm an emotional human. Um, so definitely like stories and videos, that is what like hits me the hardest. So after, I actually think it was after, I mean, I've heard about Freedom Firm for years now, but um, yeah, after listening to Mala speak to the youth group, that's when I was like, okay, I need to be I need to do more than just like, now I'm aware. So you hit the awareness piece and then it's like, okay, now what? Because I'm aware, I can't just pretend like this isn't happening, but I also feel, yeah, pretty small. And like, this is a really big issue, but there are people doing incredible work. Um, so I want to be a support of that. Like, I, I don't know how this work gets done really, but whatever I can do on this side, like from Rochester, I can do, you know, talk about it, share posts, do whatever that we can, um, you know, safely on the internet based on restrictions. But yeah, so I think for me, like being a financial partner is, yeah, just something that I felt was important because I, like, there's only, there's, you just, I don't know, you just hit a certain point where it's like, you can't do nothing and work's being done, but they need assistance too. So, um, so for me personally, a financial partner and then, um, for Browncroft, I'm, they're like, they're different. So we both support financially, but then for Browncroft and I'd love for Sarah, maybe to talk about this, um, a little bit later, but we, we did a jewelry party, over the last year because it was on Zoom, but that's something that got Brown Crafters connected um, through their through their website and the jewelry and work that's, you know, part of the restoration process for the girls. So I'd love for Sarah to talk more about that or Mala, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, so that is something that was a cool way to get Brown Crafters to connect. So people that already know about Freedom Firm, but also can support in, you know, different ways. And, and then they have a piece of jewelry or a bag or something that people can point out and be like, where is that from or whatever. And then that just, you know, helps awareness too. So, yeah. But by the way, um, my wife bought a few pairs of jewelry from you folks. So we gave them out as Christmas presents. Sarah, I guess I'm directing this question to you kind of the way Alyssa hinted. It sounds like there's a number of creative and helpful ways to be a part and volunteer. You've already shared some of them, but just give people a glimpse into how this isn't just an awareness or a sharing, but how you can actually be part of the work that Freedom Firm is doing. I'd just be curious from your perspective. Yeah. I think a highlight from this past year for us was launching what we've called the ambassador program. So we invited people to make a year long commitment that we would write a blog every month uh, that was specifically geared towards education and awareness. And these group of ambassadors would share that with their network once a month. And that's been a really exciting program to have a group of 60 people spread out across the country and actually across the world. We have a couple of ambassadors in Europe, um, but it's been fun to connect with them and know that you know, we can only reach so many people and then they're expanding that to their whole network and spheres of family and friends and coworkers. So we've really had a lot of fun with that ambassador program and it's still open for people to join and commit to, yeah, I'm going to advocate for the work of Freedom Firm. And I think mm -hmm. social media is so crowded right now. I know for me, I pay attention a lot more when it's a personal friendship and relationship that I care about. If that person is sharing about something on their heart, I'm way more apt to listen. And so we really, really value and need people to use their own voices and their own platform to spread the word about the work of 
rescue, restoration, and justice. And yeah, it was really fun to help with the Brown Croft virtual jewelry party. And a couple of our ambassadors helped host a Zoom jewelry party as well last month. And it was just incredible. It was a Saturday afternoon, just one hour, like 45 minutes, and uh, 20 people signed on and learned about Freedom Firm and looked at some of the jewelry that survivors have made. And just really fun to see how in the pandemic there's ways to be involved um, no matter where you are. So those have been really exciting things to be a part of. And just thought I would share one story that uh, really surprised me. The the past couple of weeks, we shared a video about a girl who was rescued sev- yeah, several years ago. A Freedom Firm has been advocating for her and fighting for justice for seven years now. And the team put together a great video about her story and posted it on our Instagram account. And just one person reshared it and tagged his friends and asked them to share it again. And over the course of a week, we got 1500 views just because this one person started to share it. And a video I posted last month, no one shared and it got about a hundred views. So I just was blown away by the power of one person to spread good news of hope. And I think, yeah, the topic of sex trafficking is really heavy and it is an injustice and um, it's just, yeah, terrible problem that we have. But I love that Freedom Firm has stories of hope to offer, stories of transformation and freedom and restoration. And so I think, yeah, with the heaviness, I also just see a lot of beauty in the message that goes out. And so I think it's an opportunity that we all have to, you know, reflect in God's power to bring restoration and healing. So, you know, Mala and Sarah, we, one of the questions we've been asking our guests is why is it so important to volunteer in 2020, uh, 2020 this past year in 2021. And, um, you know, just I'm hearing both of you and uh, I was just reflecting Eugene Peterson wrote the book along obedience in the same direction. And it's just about, you know, I, I hear about it took seven years to bring justice for someone. And, you know, it just in our culture, you know, we want to get to the next thing. We want to keep going. Um, you know, I think about right now, I'm in a lot of circles like, Hey, you should get on TikTok, but like, who knows if TikTok's going to be here in the next year or, you know, Hey, there's this new fad. And, you know, I guess I'm just kind of the way I'd like to frame this question for both of you, especially since this was started, um, almost or coming up on, I mean, 20 years ago, um, in a few years, but you know, what does it mean to not only volunteer, and to serve an organization like this, but why does it matter for the long term to say, you know what, uh, I'm going to be part of the ambassador program. I'm going to, you know, what changes in an individual when they decide to make that commitment that you've noticed? Um, I think that when you begin to step up and say, tell the Lord that you're available for, for, not only hearing about the issue, but um, that you want to you want to do something about it, and you you um, purpose that in your heart, and you purpose it in your in your mind, and it becomes something you're aiming at. Um, then he begins to he begins to change you, mm. and I think God is after all of our hearts, and He is passionate about bringing his kingdom to earth and it absolutely starts in your heart your Mm. heart not not the people that you even think need rescuing they do but so do you we all need rescuing every single day from the evil that is without that is all around us and and so the longer I work with these girls and the longer I've been involved in his work of justice, the more um, I'm aware of my own need for Christ and my own need for rescue and redemption and forgiveness and my own waywardness. And so they're just a tremendous mirror for me of 
God's heart for, for the lost. But that includes me. <laughs> and so I think that's just the power of getting involved with what the Lord's asking you to do is that he's not just going to transform the lost and, and the girls. He's going to transform you. Mm-hmm. And if you want to be transformed, and get ready because it probably won't look the way that you want it to look. It's not going to be neat and it's definitely not comfortable. I can promise you that. But but you'll be completely changed. Wow. So, Sarah, would you add anything to that? Yeah, just to go back to your question and make it specific with yeah, the season that we're all in right now in 2020 and this year, I think it can be so tempting and easy to fall into negativity. I know for myself, just getting really overly focused on the challenges in my world or the limits that the pandemic has brought about. Um, But there's, you know, to Mala's point, I agree wholeheartedly that we also are benefited when we step out and start to serve. And God has things he wants to teach us and grow in us in the midst of that. I think that is such a powerful um, way to combat a lot of the negativity and challenges of this year is to look outside our own small worlds, my own, uh, mm-hmm. you know, bubble and concerns and problems that I'm facing. Um, all of that can be put into a better perspective if I'm willing to step outside of my own concerns and look towards the interests of others. And that's really a way that we get to understand what Jesus did for us better. Like I love the passage in Philippians too, of he left his place in heaven to come and look to our interests and serve. And out of an overflow of receiving what he's done for us, we get to do the same thing um, and be blessed through it too. Man, Sarah, that is such a great segue to our last question. Which is, you know, what does Jesus have to say? So, well, so what Alyssa and I do is, you know, we're going to answer this question um, individually. And then um, we don't usually have two guests. So this is exciting. We get to hear from two people. So you guys can decide who's going to go first. Um, But I guess I'll get started. Then I'll throw it to Alyssa. Um, You know, what does Jesus have to say about volunteering to combat sex trafficking. And, um, you know, I, I go to the the scene in John where this woman who has adultery is brought before Jesus. And um, uh, there's a lot of cultural things. It's probably not a perfect comparison to the work that Freedom Firm, Sarah and Mala do. But, you know, I, I'm left reading that passage, you know, with a ton of questions. Why was it the woman that was brought there why wasn't the man brought there also? I'm left thinking about religious leaders who who use this woman um, as, as a political gain and then to encounter Jesus um, who, who in the midst of this treats her as the creator and says that she's created in God's image. And uh, it reminds me of a story my... Um, one of my theology professors, his wife lived in, uh, Canada for a little bit and she shared an apartment with, um, with some women who, um, were prostitutes. And she said, she was looking in the mirror one day and she just said to herself, I'm, you know, I, I'm so much better than these women. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit spoke to her and she broke down with tears and she said, just like what Mala said, that I am so in need of Jesus that I, you know, I'm so broken. And that began a heart transformation for her. And I look at myself and, you know, you can put yourself in the shoes of those individuals, but Jesus taking the most vulnerable, the person that's the most judged by others. And um, there's a, you know, when Mala said bringing the kingdom here, I just couldn't help but seeing that story because in some ways we're all that woman that we're, you know, there and God forgives us. And, and part of dealing with an issue and the reason you go after it is because like what Mala said, you know, it's the brokenness that you encounter in yourself. So yeah, I'm leaving with it. Don't give preachers the microphone anyways. So, (laughs) but go ahead, Alyssa. Yeah. Um, so 
I mean, we're talking about young girls and I think that's something that, I mean, for me at least it's, that's like, I mean, I don't even know. I don't know how to put it into words because it's just, I don't know. It's just insane. But, um, like you think about these girls and they just don't have a voice when they're being, um, when they're captured like this, like there is no voice, they have a voice, but it's, you know, not being able to, um, be shared or maybe they don't know that they have a voice. Like it's just, yeah, everything is just out of their control. Um, and so in Proverbs 31, eight and nine, it says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute, speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and needy. And I was just reading this and I was thinking like, those are commands. Those are not like little suggestions. Like you could, if you want to, but like, nope, (laughs) those are commands. We're supposed to do that. Um, and that's what freedom firm is doing. Like they are speaking up for those and, you know, interceding for those that are captured and quieted and like they, yeah, they're just bringing life into these girls that have just been silenced. Um, I just think it's really important and, and it's all over the Bible to think about like, take care of those you know, take care of the poor, take care of the fatherless and the widows. And like, that's everywhere. And with, you know, repetition comes emphasis and importance. And, um, yeah. So I just think like, those are things that we can't ignore and like speaking as Christians, their commands and we're supposed to follow them. So, um, yeah. And then also like with the restoration piece, I loved, um, what Mala was saying that it's not just, you know, rescuing them because there is that other piece of justice and restoration and how like just rescuing doesn't, I mean, it's helpful obviously for the individual girl, but doesn't like fix the problem as a whole. And I just think that's so cool to think about like all the work that you're doing, because that is, you know, God's heart, that's Jesus's heart to think about like rescuing, but then also like the justice piece that comes and, and the restoration. I mean, even in your story about the woman, that's like, like she realized it and then that's what started her journey. So there's so much, um, yeah, I don't know. I just think Freedom Firm does a a really beautiful job of taking like the silenced girl and, you know, giving her a voice and, treating her like Jesus, you know, he sees her. Um, so yeah. Sarah, Mala, you, you both can just go, whoever wants to go first and whoever wants to go last. So go ahead, Sarah. Yeah. When I saw this question, I was immediately thinking of some of Jesus's first words when he starts his ministry. Um, this is in Luke four it says, yeah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And I think that is such a clear example of Jesus himself saying that he came to set people free and bring freedom to those in bondage. Mm -hmm. And that looks like a lot of different things in a lot of our lives. As Mala said, we all need rescue, but um, I think that Jesus did clearly uh, come to bring freedom. And that's a part of what we want to do in our work is to reflect God's character, his heart of justice and compassion and freedom. And yeah, it's really humbling to be a small part of what he is doing ultimately um, and bringing freedom into the lives of yeah these young girls Mm. yeah thanks I really just got um two two things that everybody said incredibly uh meaningful things and I think those are all aspects for sure of God's heart for for these girls I think it's important to remember that these girls are not, they are not able to walk into a church 
um, they're not able to go out and and walk into a police station and and they're not able to get to a cell phone or any kind of phone and ask for help. We've had girls who will literally write down help me save me and on a piece of paper and throw it outside the brothel window down onto the street. And one story, someone did pick up that paper and go to the police and, and we were able to rescue that girl. Um, but every time they run away, they will get rounded up, found by the brothel keeper, brought back. We had one girl who tried to run away three times and every time was caught, captured and brought back. She was put in a hole uh, for, for a week um, without food um, and covered up under the floor. So there's tremendous retribution in the brothel when these girls try to run away. And 99 times out of 100, they're caught and recaptured. So these are not girls who can even cry for help. And so it really is the most, one of the most egregious um, things you can really imagine. And so the picture I think of um, when I think of the girls and Jesus is he left the 99 and went after the one sheet, you know, the one little lamb that was stuck on the side of the cliff. And if, if that lamb had even moved, that lamb would have fallen to its death. But the good shepherd came and searched and, and didn't give up and even ignored the 99 to find that one precious lamb. And so I think scripture's full of, of words of um, uh, proclaiming uh, release to the captive. Um, but I also think that just the stories that Jesus shared, the parables are just pictures of how he sees his creation, how he, he loves each one to distraction. And so we try to, we're just trying to follow in his steps really and go after, after these lost, these lost sheep. So. Wow. Um, so probably the best way uh, to get in touch with Freedom Firm, what, what's your website? Uh, freedomfirm.org freedomfirm.org you know just uh, as always the best way to get in touch with us uh, is to go to our website and subscribe to our email and um, you know I'll, I'll give you all the last word uh, is there anything else that you would want to encourage listeners to do um, kind of digitally social media What's what would be the biggest help is it share a video or I guess a, I'll, I'll look at Sarah for that one yeah yeah, we would love to have you follow along and get updates about what's happening. You can find us on Instagram, freedom underscore firm, and Facebook at Freedom Firm USA. And there's always new posts. Um, we had a rescue last week, so celebrating that uh, with more information on the website and social media as well. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, Mala, Dave, our producer, and uh, my wonderful series co-host, Alyssa. We, uh, we hope you listen to this and uh, share this with a friend. Thank you so very much. <laughs>